Hello everyone, I'm Jason Kaiser. Welcome to this Intro to Niagara video. I'm going to share three simple tips that are going to get you started into Niagara. These tips were super useful to me as I was watching Hadija Chamberlain's videos over on our website. If you want to get started into those videos, you can just click the link in the description. We're giving you a full hour of content for free, along with the source files that they work from as they're teaching the video. So. That's awesome. On that note as well, there's just a lot of other great content over on our site that I highly recommend you checking out. We cover full beginner, never touched an effects editor or drawn in your life, all the way up to fully advanced content. For those of you who are already working as effects artists, it really covers the full spectrum of skills. All right, well, let's dive into this little effect that I wanna make, and I'm gonna share those three tips with you as we go along. All right, so let's dive into creating the effect in Niagara. And I'm gonna go through those three tips as I go along and you're welcome to follow along at home, either in your own project file or with the project that Hadija created that I mentioned that you can download. It really doesn't matter. You'll be able to follow along either way. So we're here in Unreal 5 and the first tip is to get yourself oriented. Unreal 5 can be a little overwhelming, that's totally a normal feeling. It's a bit like stepping into a jet fighter cockpit where there's just a million knobs in front of you and you're afraid if you push one wrong, then you might blow something up, right? It's a little different than say, I don't know, like a, I would imagine a crop duster airplane or something like that would be a lot simpler. But here we are in a jet fighter. We have a lot more power at our fingertips, which is a great thing and sometimes a scary thing. And that's totally fine. I'm gonna walk you through just the pieces that you need so you don't have to worry about the rest at least not for now, we can get into that later. So if I right click here anywhere in my content browser in a blank space, I can create a Ni Niagara system. I can also, if I, let's see if I give myself enough space by right clicking. Nope, not gonna do that. Oh, perfect, it's not in front of my, my head. <laughs> I can also create a Niagara system over here under effects Niagara system. It's just really simple either way. So I create a Niagara system. And what I want from these options is to create an empty system. There we go. And my wish shall be granted. I have a new Niagara system right here. Let's get really creative and call it um, particles, <laughs> whatever. All right, we double click on particles. And now we've got this thing going on here. Um, if you have another monitor, it can be nice to put it over there, or I just like to drag it up and dock it here so I can flip between my main window and my particle window. Okay, so orientation. Tip number one, you want to understand the different parts of the software that are important to you. First thing you might notice, mine's probably a little different than yours. This window over here probably looks something like this. So don't freak out if you're like, oh, why isn't it dark? So this window is under window, if you can imagine that. And then it's under preview, um, preview scene settings. It looks like I nudged my window a little bit here. Let's bump that back up. So that's the preview scene settings. Uh, go ahead and play around with whatever you want over here. You can change the color to be darker or lighter. Um, I just like a nice dark gray color because it makes my particles pop, but you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that when you're done with that window, you come back to selection because You'll notice when you click on anything out here, this selection panel lights up with options and those options are gonna be very important as we get into this. All right, uh, click and drag so my camera's fixed here. Okay, so the different parts are a particle system, that's this here, and really just this whole window here represents the particle system container. Inside of that, we have all of the particle emitters. That's the next component. Think of an emitter like a garden hose. So the particle system would be like a collection of garden hoses, I guess. And then each emitter is an individual garden hose. Beneath that, you have a module, which would be like settings on each hose of or each emitter. I'm going to stick with the hose analogy, people. That's what it's going to go. And uh, then you've got parameters that are specifically like the exact numbers or data that's put into each module. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I can add an emitter here, so I can right click. And now I don't wanna be under parent emitters or behavior examples. I wanna be under templates. And I wanna come over to fountain. That's the emitter for us. Ah, now it's like a garden hose. Maybe you can see what I was talking about. 
So it's spraying out these particles. I can zoom in with my mouse wheel. I can left click and drag and look around. And I've got this beautiful emitter that is sitting in my particle system. You can imagine I could create more and more and more of these. It would create more orange boxes. For this tutorial, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep it nice and simple. So let's see, got all this in here. And then, I don't know, I've got different modules. You can start seeing as you're working on getting oriented that they've color coded some things for you. There's the red color code, which, and I apologize if you're colorblind and this is a challenge at all, but just trust me on this. Anything that relates to the emitter is red and it's kind of a reddish orange. And then anything that relates to the particle spawn is green or particles in general is going to be green rather. So that's kind of cool. So what's an example of a module? Well, we've got spawn rate over here. And uh, if we change that spawn rate down to something like, I don't know, like four, we can instantly see that by switching that parameter, it dropped way down. Now, some modules are more complicated than others. Like if I go to, I don't know, like initialize particle, that's gonna have a lot more settings on it than the spawn rate did. So over here, I've got things like uniform sprite, and then if you're like me, <laughs> it may not have enough room. So you can grab it there. You can also grab it here. So you can actually read what the dang thing is saying. Uniform sprite size min. I don't know. Let's see what 250 does. It's always fun to mess around. That's what I love about being a particle artist. You're just tinkering all the time. We're just tinkers screwing around with stuff. Cool. So now we've got these kind of massive fuzzy globs popping out. So I changed the parameter here. This is what we call a parameter is this number itself. The module would be here. If I click on this, it's got like lots of modules inside of it, or I can choose just one of them because you can see this is like a, a header right here. So take some time, maybe pause this video even, and just kind of poke around and get familiar with what the different things in the interface do. If you want to skip ahead, you can go ahead and skip ahead and try doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Okay. So that's step number one, get yourself oriented, take a minute to breathe, calm down. It's not so bad, I promise. Once you get into it, it's actually quite fun. Second tip, we're gonna go into materials. All right, if I come, let me go ahead and save this because you never know when your computer might act up on you and crash or something. So I come over here to materials. I have a nice organized materials folder. Uh, let's see. Um, no, I want to say in block ins and then materials. Yeah, that's where I'm going to go. And I'm just going to create a material here. You can put your material wherever you want. Don't worry too much about file structure quite yet. Just for now, you've got enough on your plate. Just get yourself oriented. If you're more experienced and you know better, then you know that you should put your materials in a very clean and tidy place. But for those that are just getting started, it's okay. Let's name it something creative like new material. Awesome. Double click into that thing. Now we've got, now we're rolling. We've got three windows open. We've got our material here. So you're going to see a lot of stuff turned on here. This was something that really stood out to me as I was watching Hadija's intro to Niagara series. I really love how they just kept it super simple. And I'm going to do the same thing for you today. Maybe even simpler than what they did. Now, you can't really teach Niagara without teaching materials at least a little bit. The material is the particle itself. Like think of it like the little card, like if you had a clear plastic or clear glass card, you want to think of the material as whatever is displaying on that card. And then you throw that thing through the air and now you have a moving particle and hopefully it doesn't shatter when it hits the ground. So we've got our material here and I want it on a card. So this option here in the middle is the card option. Cool, so by default, Unreal has this really fancy looking shimmery shiny thing and you see it's got things like metallic and specular and roughness and anastropy. I don't even know what these things are. I guess if you mouse over them, speaking of tip number one and getting oriented, you can teach yourself and learn pretty much what anything in Unreal does just by mousing over it, which is pretty handy to know but we don't want our material to be so complicated. So to simplify it, before I do anything else in here, I'm gonna come over here to the, the blend mode and I'm gonna change that from opaque over to translucent. <gasps> Some of my options disappeared instantaneously. And then I'm gonna change the shading model from default lit to unlit. And then a couple more went away as well. 
So now we've got just four options. Four. We got emissive color, opacity, world position offset, and refraction. Yes, we can do particles that have some of those other fancy things that went away, but we want to keep it simple and get through this quickly. So let's just go ahead and right click over here. And it's going to be critical if you're doing a particle material to have particle color. That's one thing that you're definitely going to want to want. You're definitely going to want. And then you're going to want some kind of texture to go with that, usually. If I hold the button T on my keyboard and I left click, that gives me a texture sample. Now I can come over here and I can go back to my browser. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use one of the amazing textures painted by Ali Sorensen in our texture painting series. So this is available again over on our site in one of our classes. Uh, she actually painted all of these textures in there. It's intro to texture painting using Krita. It's free software. And it's a great series that she does covering how to paint really cool looking textures for use in particle systems. And I really like this ring texture she has here. I'll open this up so you can see it up close. A good texture, I cannot overstate this enough. A really, really well painted texture can just carry a particle system and make the whole thing look amazing. You're gonna see that happen here. You'll be amazed at what I can do with this, just one texture and a very simple shader. All right, so I've got that uh, texture selected here in my browser. Because it's selected, all I have to do is push this over arrow and it plops it in, bloop. And now it's just a matter of wiring all this up. So I've got the particle color there. I've got the texture here. I will need a multiply node as well. So I'll hold the letter M on my keyboard as in multiply and I left click and there we have it. So color is pretty straightforward. I just want the particle color from the top to go into my emissive color. This bottom one here is alpha. This is the transparency, the clearness of the glass, right? That's going to pass into A on my multiply. And then here I could really do any of these. I could do RGB, RG, or B. Um, you know, I'm going to do R. If you do RGB, it'll also work. But technically, I only need to do one color because it's black and white and they're all the same. And then that's going to take my transparency from the particle, multiply it against the transparency of this grayscale thing, and I'm going to put that into opacity. So now I've got this nice, transparent, bursty, glowy thingamajig. And I want to make sure I save it. And this is important because if you don't save your material, it won't be read in the particle. The particle won't know what the heck is going on. So I go back to particles. And I want that material to be here. I don't want that fuzzball, right? I want the texture that I came up with. And now we're on to tip number three, which is animating. Well, I guess not quite tip number three because I still got to finish up the material. Let's just go down to Sprite Renderer. All I got to do is go back to my new material, browse to it here. Now I've got it selected. See what that did? It selected that material for me. And then I go back to my particles and I push this and bada bing, my sh super shiny, awesome material is loading. <laughs> it's preparing the shader. <laughs> there it is. Woohoo! We got hoops jumping. We're jumping through hoops. Pretty neat. Looking pretty good. So now we're on to tip number three. Sorry for jumping the gun there. I've got my material working. I need to fix the animation on this because this ain't looking good. It's really looking terrible. So I want to figure out where my animation controls are for, I don't know, position, maybe edits on the color, maybe some edits on the size, right? How am I going to make those things animate or move over time in the way that I want them to? So let's go ahead and first there's a few things that we can do. I know I don't want gravity pulling this thing down, so I'm going to uncheck gravity force. If I just do that, the gravity is going to turn off and now they just fly up forever. Woo! -hoo! Next up, I don't want the velocity to just move in one direction. I want it to kind of move in every direction. So if I go to add velocity right here, I can click up on income and I can do from point. That'll get it spraying out everywhere. Pretty freaking cool. And then I can come in here to the velocity speed and adjust that down to way, way less. I just want very subtle motion. So I'm going to do a range, a random range of between five and 10. 
So that's looking kind of cool. So now I've got this like thing. It's like randomly moving out in different directions and spawning, but it's kind of like glitching. It's like appearing really rapidly. And that goes back to the particle color that I was mentioning here. Remember the alpha is how transparent it is or how much it's fading in. Um, I can save that. So we want to fade it in a little more gradually. <clears throat> so that's going to be under scale color. So for that, this doesn't look like color, so I don't really like using the graph editor for color. Instead, if I want to change the mode up here under scale mode, I can switch that over here to a color curve, linear color curve. And uh, let's see. So this on the bottom is the alpha. That's how transparent it is. I want to drag that over here. And then I can click over here and create a new one. So now it's like full faded in in the middle, but I want to fade it out at the beginning. I just double click there, change that little thingy to zero. And now what we have is a nice fading. Now it's starting to look pretty cool. So next up, we can just change the color itself and we're almost done actually. So if I come up here, I can double click, change that over to a yellow. Ooh, I like that quite a bit. That's fun. There we go. Change this over here to uh, purple. Everyone always likes to do yellow and purple, so I'm going to do yellow and purple. Like I said, in Niagara, sometimes you have to double click <laughs> a lot more. Oh my gosh. Is it just lagging out on me? I think it is lagging out on me. There we go. Kind of a purplish hue up here. I'll just do full saturated purple. Why not? Usually yellow and purple don't play nice together, so I'll have to do something in the middle. Like, say... A cyan might help. If I drag that around, it's being kind of weird on me. The curve is kind of glitching out. Ooh, I kind of like that though. That's like technicolored prettiness. All right, and then last of all, there's the uh, particle uh, scale. So I don't have particle scale in here. So what I need to do is I just come into here and actually it's size, so it's scale size. So it's uh, sprite. Scale Sprite Size, it's this one right here that I can select. And you can see here, I've actually added a module right now. So that's another cool thing about Niagara is you can add as many modules as you want, making this as complex as you want, good or bad, right? And then over here, I can just grab this little green line uh, anywhere I want, really. It's a little green dot with a red line, rather. And I'm going to put it up between, somewhere between like, 0.6 and 0.8, maybe around 0.7. And there we have it. We've got a particle. So three tips. Take a minute to breathe. Get yourself oriented. Know the material editor, at least at a very basic level. And how to animate with a few simple controls inside of Niagara. And bada bing. Bonus tip. Make some awesome textures because obviously Ali's texture is hard carrying this effect like I promised it would. Um, you don't get effects this pretty without pretty textures. That's really what it comes down to. All right, so there you have it. A, an effect made in Niagara with three simple tips to get you started. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Please go ahead and check out that link in the description. That's a great way to get started if you don't know what to do next. A full free hour of content and the source files to go with it. What have you got to lose? Also, over on our website, there's a blog that goes over how to advance your career in effects, how to get started, how other people have advanced their careers in effects, and no brainer, you're here on the YouTube channel. There's lots of other videos for you to check out here as well. So thank you so much for being here. We're so grateful for all the support that you give us. I can't wait to get on to the next video and the next and the next, and please keep us updated. We've got a contact page over on our website as well. We love hearing from you and hearing your success stories. It inspires us. So until next time, keep on making awesomeness. See ya.